Mrs. Claus here. Wonderful to see you again. I have a very special story today. Actually, the elves told me this story. Somebody had sent it to them on Facebook. Really? But it's, a, it's, it's not fake news. It's a, it's a true story. It's about a taxi driver living in a, a Midwest town. And it was his last call for the evening. And then he got to go home. Well, he pulled up to the address that called him. And he honked the horn. And he waited. And nobody came. Well, it's my last call. I could just leave and blow it off. But something inside told him, no, no, don't do that. So he decided to go up and knock on the door. It was an immaculate little house, so well kept. It had a long, long sidewalk from the street to the front door. He walked down that long sidewalk and he knocked on the door and he heard some rustling and then he heard somebody inside say, just a moment. And then he heard something being dragged. Oh, okay. And then suddenly the door opened and there before him was a teeny little lady. She must have been all of 90 years old. And she was just dressed so lovely. She had a, a lovely print dress on and she had a little pill hat. You know, the pill hats with the little veil that went down in front of your hat? like in the 1940s. And he peeked inside the house and it looked like it wasn't being lived in at all. There was nothing on the walls, no knickknacks or pictures. The, the furniture was all covered with sheets and there was a big box full of things. And she looked at the driver and she said to him, would you do me a favor? Could you take my suitcase to your cab? Of course. And so he left her there and he took the suitcase and he put it in the cab, in the trunk. And then he went back to get her. And she turned and took one last look inside her house. And then she closed the door. And he grabbed her arm and she weaved her arm through his and he walked her down the sidewalk. And when he got to the cab and opened the door, she looked at him and she thanked him. She thanked him so much for being so kind. And he looked at her and he goes, no need to thank me. I will treat all of my passengers as if you were my mother. And she looked at him. Oh, you're a good boy. And she got into the back seat of the cab. Well, he started to take off. She handed him the address to where she needed to go. And then she said to him, would you be able to drive me downtown first? And he looked at her in the mirror and said, you know, that, that's a long way. It's a different, totally different route. And she said back to him, it's okay. I have time. I'm going to hospice. My doctor says I don't have long and I don't have a family and anybody here to take care of me. And I just wanted to take a look and see, and he stopped her. And he turned off the meter and he said, what route would you like me to take you? And with that, the two of them spent over two hours. He drove her downtown and, and first she pointed out the building where she used to work at when she was an elevator operator. And then they drove past a little house that her and her husband first lived in right after they got married. And they and she she drove him past and pointed out a long, long building that was a warehouse. But what one time, long ago, it happened to be a ballroom and a dance hall where she would go when she was young and a teenager and dance the night away. And over and over again, as they drove around, she would point out places that were really, really important to her as she had gone on through her life's journey. And finally, she said to the driver, it's okay now, I'm, I'm tired, let's go. And with that, he drove her to the address she had given him. It was a long, flat, 
convalescent home of sorts. It had a rounded driveway in the front, and he drove that driveway right under a large overhang. Two orderlies came out as he stopped the cab. He got out and went to the trunk to pull out her suitcase. And as he brought her suitcase around, the orderlies had already gotten her out of the cab and into a wheelchair. And she said to him, how much do I owe you? And he looked at her and said, oh, nothing, nothing. She said, no, you, you have to make a living. No, it's okay. There are more customers and more passengers. And with that, he bent down to give her a hug. And she grabbed onto him. And she said to him, thank you. Thank you so much for bringing such joy to an old woman. And with that, he gave her a peck on the cheek. And he stepped back. And the orderlies took her in to the convalescent home. And the door closed on a life. At that moment, he got back into the, his cab. He was profoundly touched. He sat there a moment, and then he started driving. He couldn't go home yet. He drove, and he started wondering in his mind, what, what would have happened if I had just left after I honked and nobody came out and just blew this whole thing off? What would have happened to her if, if another cab driver had, had come to pick her up and was just cranky and angry and didn't want to drive her where she needed to go? What if, what if? And then he realized that the moments he spent with her were probably the most important moments in his life. Because you see, it's not the big grand things, the big grand moments that are important. It's the little tiny moments, the special moments that are disguised. And we all need to remember that it isn't what you do for a person or give to a person. Sometimes the most important thing a person will always remember is how you made them feel. Have a good day. Have a good night. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.